In this video, we're going to start off factorization by looking at the first method, which we call biggest common factor. Factorizing is the inverse operation of simplifying by determining a product. Normally, we will simplify the product of a certain amount of factors by multiplying out. And now we are going to focus on factorizing by breaking those terms up into the product of factors. There are different types of factorizing, and the type you use will be determined by the given expression. In this video, we're going to have a look at the first type, which is the biggest common factor. We already know that a factor is a value that the term can be divided by. Adding the word common means that the factor should be a factor for every single term in that expression so that it is common in all terms. The last requirement is that it will then also be the biggest of those common factors. Example 1. Factorize. Here we are given an expression that consists of two terms. We now need to determine the biggest common factor of these two terms. Firstly, we are going to start off breaking up these terms into their factors. So 4 broken up into prime factors is 2 times 2 which we then multiply with x times x times x times x, or 4x's. And then 16x squared is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x. Now we have all the factors and we can identify the common factors. Both of these terms have 2 times 2, or 4, and then both of them also have x times x as a factor. This means that our biggest common factor is 2 times 2, or 4, and x times x, or x squared. You should be able to directly from 4 and 16 determine their common factor as 4, and then you can also remember that for your variables, the smallest exponent will always be your common factor. This means you can directly write down the biggest common factor from your first step if you prefer to do that. As I said earlier, factorizing means that you break an expression up into factors. That means we now need to determine with what we need to multiply for x squared to get back to our original expression. I'm going to start off by taking the first term of 4x to the power of 4 and dividing it by my common factor. And once I've simplified, I will get a value of x squared. Because 4 divided by 4 is 1, and using my exponential laws, 4 minus 2 will give me x squared. And this means I still need to multiply my common factor of 4x squared with another x squared to get back to my original first term. Now I'm going to repeat this with the second term and also divide this by the common factor of 4x squared and after simplifying I will get a value of plus 4. This means I still need to multiply 4x squared with plus 4 to get the original second term. And here we have factorized we broke up the original expression into the product of two factors. Let's have a look at another example. In example two, we now have three different terms in the expression, and we need to determine the biggest common factor for the three terms. And again, we're going to start off by focusing on the coefficients, the constant values in front of each term, and determine their biggest common factor. For 24, 12, and 6, that common factor will be 6. Next, we're going to have a look at our variables. First off, we have x to the power of 3, or x times x times x. Next, we have x squared, or x times x. And then we have only x. That means that for these three terms, we can at most take out an x, because the last term only has one x. 
Here we now have our biggest common factor and next we need to determine the second factor by dividing each of the original terms by this common factor. So I'm going to start off by taking my first term, 24x cubed, and dividing it by the common factor of 6x. 24 divided by 6 is 4, and using exponential laws, x to the power of 3 divided by x is x to the power of 2. So the first term in my bracket will be 4x to the power of 2. Next, I'm going to take my middle term of minus 12x squared and also divide by 6x. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. And x squared divided by x will simply be x to the power of 1. So my middle term in my bracket is minus 2x. Lastly, I'm going to divide the plus 6x by 6x. And when I divide anything by itself, I will always get 1. So the last term in my bracket is plus 1. It is very important to remember that the number of terms that you start off with, in this case three terms, is also the number of terms that you should have in your bracket. In example 3, we now have two terms to factorize, but this time we have more than one variable. Still, we are going to start off by focusing on the constant terms, the minus 40 and minus 15. Their biggest common factor will be 5. You can also choose to make this a minus 5, which I will show later on. Next, moving on to the variables, I'm going to start off with x, and we have x squared and x to the power of 4. So our common factor will be x to the power of 2, the biggest number of x's that we can divide in both terms. And lastly, we have y to the power of 4 and y to the power of 1, which means we can divide by 1y in both these terms. And now we need to determine what the two terms are that we need to multiply this common factor with to get back to our original expression. And if you are confident enough with your division, you can write the answers immediately and not do separate calculations. The first term, once divided, will be minus 8y to the power of 3, and the second term is minus 3x to the power of 2. Earlier I mentioned that you can also choose to make your common factor minus 5x squared y. In this case, it doesn't matter which one you choose, but sometimes in bigger calculations, it helps if you also take out a minus. If I now divide by a minus in both terms, it means my second factor signs will change. So I will have plus 8y to the power of 3 and plus 3x to the power of 2. Both of these answers will be acceptable. In example 4, it is important to see that the instruction says factorize and not simplify, because with simplification, you would have multiplied the m and the n into the brackets. Here, we now have two terms which we need to factorize, so we need to determine what the common factor is. What can both terms be divided by? And in this case, the common factor is the whole bracket, x plus y, because both terms have the bracket x plus y as a factor. Next, we need to determine with what we should multiply this x plus y to get back to our original two terms. The first term we had was m times x plus y, and we now need to divide this by x plus y. And when we do that, you are left with only m. Similarly, in the second term, you'll be left with only n.